This video looks at the use of an observer for disturbance estimation. Previous videos then have demonstrated that we can use an independent model in order to give effective state and disturbance estimation and therefore to facilitate unbiased predictions and that means that OMPC or SMPC will work. Now while this did allow disturbance rejection you could query the sensitivity of the approach and <coughs> we're not going to offer any insights on that at the moment. What this video will do will demonstrate code for a common alternative approach that is to use an observer for estimating both the system states and the disturbance. The process model then is assumed to be something like this. So a standard state space model, x equals ax plus bu, y equals cx plus d, so d is an output disturbance model. An observer is needed to estimate both x and d. So a suitable augmented model is going to be given by something like this. You'll notice we've augmented the state dimension with the disturbance and we've assumed that the disturbance stays constant every sample. In practice it won't but that's a, a fairly typical model. And then you'll see the top row basically gives us AX plus BU. <coughs> the output depends upon both the X and the D. So that's a simple augmented model and what I'm going to do is call the augmented A matrix A0, augmented B matrix B0 and the augmented C matrix. I'm going to call it C0 and the augmented state we'll call Z. So this observer has got a state Z. The augmented process model then is taken to be something like this. So Z equals A0Z plus B0U, Y equals C0Z. Now an observer is corrected by using the difference between its own output and the process measured output. So in other words, what we do is we add this correction term, you can see there, which basically takes the process measurement, YP, and compares it with the observer output, which is C0 times ZK. Now, if there was no error, there will be no correction. And this error is multiplied by L, and L obviously has to be chosen. That's the observer gain, and that will basically give you your observer dynamics. What we're not going to do in this video is concern ourselves with how L might be selected. A control law giving no offset in this steady state then can be defined like this. So we have UK minus USS equals minus K, XK minus XSS. But what we're doing here is we're going to assume that the XSS is based upon the observer states. Now, just as a by the by, I can, and we've done this in earlier videos, give some explicit expressions for XSS and USS based upon the target R and the disturbance estimate D. Now in this case the observer is going to be used to estimate both XK and D. So you'll notice there's the observer equations and within Z I have XK, that's the top few rows, and then DK, the bottom few rows. So what I'm going to do is use this D in here and obviously use the X in the control law. So what have we got? There's our control law, there's our estimates for the steady state values and those use this D which is the disturbance estimate. Now what I can do is I can plug all this together and just give myself a slightly more compact form um, which is given here. I'm not going to dwell on that, but if you look in the particular simulation code, you'll see just to make a difference, the simulation code in this video uses this form for the control law. The key thing is this D comes from the observer, so the D comes from the observer, and this X comes from the observer. So both the X and the D are estimates which come out of the observer. We're going to assume then some modelling errors, so we've got some parameter uncertainty and a non-zero disturbance, which must be estimated, and we're going to run some simulations and see how things work. What you will notice in particular is the disturbance estimate will not match the actual disturbance because the disturbance estimate will also cater for the parameter uncertainty in order to ensure unbiased prediction. First examples then, we've got video 411, examples 1 and 2. 
So here's example one. So if we run this one, and what do you see here? The key thing to look at is this light blue line and the green line. So the light blue line is the disturbance estimate which is coming out of the observer. The green line is the actual disturbance and you'll be saying but this disturbance estimate is nothing like the actual disturbance but remember the disturbance estimate is also catering for parameter uncertainty. If you look at the blue line which is the actual process output what you notice it is indeed converging so you have got offset free tracking as desired using these observer states. If I go to the second example, which will be the multivariable one, again a bit messier, but you see the same pattern. All right. Originally, we probably had no parameter uncertainty during the transients, and you can see that everything looks fine. But once the disturbance happens, you'll see that the disturbance estimates don't match exactly. They're going to take some while to catch up, but the key thing is the outputs do converge. You get offset free tracking. So the key observations, the disturbance estimate and the actual disturbance may differ even while the disturbance is zero and that could be to do with parameter uncertainty but nevertheless you get offset free tracking for both non-zero targets and disturbance rejection and that's the key thing. Obviously the control law may not be robust if you have too much parameter uncertainty. Now what we might want to do next is compare the two approaches. So the previous video looked at using an independent model and now we've looked at using an observer. Two alternatives for estimating the disturbance and for ensuring that we have unbiased predictions. We might ask ourselves, how do they compare? Now in the nominal case, it should be obvious um, when you have no parameter uncertainty and no disturbances, they should give identical behavior because essentially they're not doing much. But as soon as you have parameter uncertainty or disturbances or noise, you're going to get different behavior because they have different sensitivities, because they are different control laws. Let's demonstrate this then. So if I go to example three, and on this one, this is the CISO case, you'll see what are the system outputs I get if I use the independent model for estimating the disturbance, that's in blue, or if I use an observer for estimating the disturbance. Now this is an arbitrary observer design, but let's not dwell on that. That was in red. The key thing is you can see that for the nominal tracking performance here, where there was no uncertainty, the two are the same. But as soon as I include the disturbance, then the two differ. We have very different behavior and they also have very different responses to noise. In this particular case you'll see the observer is much less sensitive to noise than the independent model. If I now go to example four and look at that one and here this is a multivariable example and you will see basically the same pattern. This one also has parameter uncertainty so you can see even during transients you can see that the blue and the red lines are different. If we add different uh, set point changes, the blue and the red line are different. If we add disturbances, the blue and the red line respond very differently. If we add noise, which is this bit at the end, the blue and the red lines are responding very differently. So the key thing is, if you use an independent model approach or an observer approach, they have very different sensitivities. So the responses you get to parameter uncertainty and to disturbances are different. However, they do both work. So the key observations, if we use an independent model or an observer, they get different responses, and this is the key thing, different responses in the uncertain case. We haven't done any formal robust design as yet, so we're not going to suggest that either of these is necessarily better than the others. The key thing is to note that they do have different sensitivities. So conclusions, we've demonstrated code for introducing an observer to estimate the system states and the disturbance value. Um, and these allow unbiased prediction and therefore your predictive control law works and gives you offset free tracking. We've noted that the use of an observer 
in conjunction with the deviation form of the control law will ensure offset free tracking in the uncertain case. However, sensitivity is different to that obtained when using an independent model to ensure bias predictions. And that's the key thing here. We should notice that the sensitivity is different, so you can, can use an independent model form or you can use an observer, but as yet, which of these is better, which of these is to be preferred, we've made no judgments on that.